riding in the same car with an escaped killer like Dixie Lincoln. I don't know. What Mary and Dale have to say? Nothing. She's unable to talk. Her condition is very critical. Does she know her husband's dead? Not yet. Well, they're not going to be tough on her. They were crazy about each other. Yes, they were. Tell us, what gives on the district attorney's spot now? I shall continue as district attorney until my successor is named. That's all I can say now, so uh, if you'll excuse me. Thanks, Mr. Forsythe. Good night. Thank you. some time ago. I dropped into your office to say hello. Nothing special. Nobody was in the reception room, so I strolled over to the desk, saw the papers on it. I can read upside down, and I like to keep in practice on papers that might give me a good story. So I leaned over for a good look, but my arm hit the ashtray and knocked it over. Grabbing for it, I struck the key that opened the intercom. It needs a little harping on. Not at my expense. Your angle on this is... It's important to me. My health may keep me inactive, but I'm still conscious of my position and reputation. As I am of mine. Your ambition, you mean? If I have to curb them, I can. Don't make it necessary. If I have to cross you in this Logan matter, I will. I'm warning you. It's at your risk. I'll take the chance. I won't let you. I'll stop you at any cost. Hi, Sugar. Good morning, Mitch. What are you doing here? Waiting for you to make it a twosome. I played a hunch you'd be in here where I could pour out my heart to you. That's assuming you have a heart. You're right, I haven't. I gave it to you. Is that what you call it? Oh, let's stop playing around, honey. How about you and me taking in the sights again tonight? I'm sorry. Some other time. I have something better on for tonight. The district attorney? No, just an assistant. But maybe he will be district attorney. Not bad. And with you, he might make it. What you're intimating is preposterous. Still, there it is. You wouldn't care to tell me what Larry meant. None of it meant anything. It was one of the very few arguments I ever had with him. Should there have been more? Stop it, Mitch. Larry was going to take over your job as district attorney tomorrow. But he gets killed tonight. You know, nothing about this adds up. Good night, John.
Uh-uh. Too long. The whole town's yelling for the lowdown. They could ask Larry. Or could they? No. You see... You mean he's dead? Yes, he is, honey. I knew it had to be that way. And Dixie Logan? He's dead, too. So there's just you now. You'll have to tell. Maybe later. Just to you. Exclusive. You always were exclusive, honey. Lucky Larry, now I know why. Why? He's gonna see you. Know him? No. He's not bad. I hope not. What's your problem, beautiful? Maybe I can help. Who are you? George Mitchell. Mitch to my friends. You can call me Mitch. Oh, of the Tribune. Flattering and right. Sees all, knows all. Except your problem. I'm going to ask him for a job. I hear he needs a new secretary. He does. And he's got one. What's your name? Marion Langdon. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. But should it be changed? The Langdon, I mean. Come with me, honey. Marion, may I present your new boss, the Honorable Lawrence Dale. Larry, you lucky person, this is your new secretary, Miss Marion Langdon. How do you do? You may be right at that. I'm always right. Well, that's all for now. I'm taking her to dinner. She'll report to work at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Then you can work out the financial details. But, Mr. Mitchell... I said Mitch to my friends. Oh, that's all right. I'll keep the job open till morning. Thank you, Mr. Dale. You'll be calling him Larry in a week. Forget it. Larry wouldn't dare not give you the job. The powerful Mr. Mitch. No, beautiful. The powerful Tribune, for which I work and which Larry Dale wants on his side. By way of my column when he runs for district attorney. Is he going to? Well, he's got that look in his eye. John Forsythe's health just about bars him from trying again. Can he win? Maybe. Look, hon, you're top shelf. You could get a job any place. Why'd you pick on Larry Dale? Or did you see his picture in the papers? Yes, I saw it. And that profile made you come running? No, not his looks. What he did. You mean the Dixie Logan case? Yes. Well, that was his best show so far. Tell me more. I was there, and I'd worked for lawyers. I wanted to see the Logan trial because I wanted to know more about court procedure and... 
And I will prove beyond a question of a doubt the guilt of this ruthless, soulless criminal known as Dixie Logan. And I saw it was the defendant, Dixie Logan. Thank you, Mr. Collins. You're sure, Mr. Foreman? Positive. The man was Dixie Logan. You're a liar. Dixie Logan. Foreman and Collins lied, and you know it because you paid them to lie. Your Honor, I must. You're ask. trying to railroad me with perjured witnesses because you know I'm not guilty. Dixie Logan came here recently to carry on his career of crime. There is no room in this city for murderous crooks like Logan. The only room we have is in the state penitentiary. I ask you to bring in the verdict that will send him there. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty as charged. And so, I sentence you to the state penitentiary to serve 20 years at hard labor. I won't be gone 20 years, Dale. I'll be back for you. And I'll pay you what I owe you in full. I knew then I wanted Mr. Dale for my next boss. So, when I heard he needed a new secretary, yes, I went running. He's brilliant. He's going places. An opinion shared enthusiastically by Mr. Dale. But not by you. Oh, I like Larry. He's made a good record as far as he's gone. Now, there's a nice guy. Gus Miller. He thinks he really owns this town, or ought to. One of the big shots of our underworld here. Probably the biggest. Very interesting. Delayed. Why didn't you go home? I wanted to finish this brief. Nonsense. I don't forget we're going to the theater tonight. Uh, any messages? Oh, uh, Mr. Miller was here. Miller? What did he want? No message except to tell you that he was here. I see. Well, pick you up soon. All right, Larry. Hey, Judge. Hello. I thought you had gone. I will be in a minute. Is it cool outside? No, oh, warm. Is it all right if I start in there? It's a good place to begin. Yeah. Things always need cleaning up around a courthouse.
on, Charlie. What do you want? You've been a bad boy. What do you want? right at my front door. Why don't you get him on the outside? We can't take chances. Like I said, he was one of Logan's men. And you know why he was there. If he got you, he got us. We wouldn't like that. How do you ever get to be a courthouse janitor anyway? How would I know that? I don't run the employment office. Maybe you'd better watch it. The blue noses are beginning to yell about the crime wave. They're always trying to ace a stool pigeon into a spot where they can get the lowdown. How about that girl in your office? Marion? Yeah. The one you're so crazy about. Am I? Well, ain't you? You're always going out with her. Maybe I have good reasons for that. Believe me, my emotions are completely under control. I don't trust her. She's absolutely honest and on the level. I'm sure of that. That's what bothers me. She looks nosy to me. She's been with me for six months now. And I haven't seen a sign of anything. That doesn't mean anything. I don't trust her. Play safe. Fire her. Yeah. Before she does find out something. It's good insurance. Fire her. Well, that's ridiculous. Don't you ever have a hunch? I have. What gets you gets us. Don't forget that. And we want to see her fired.
morning, Mr. Dale. Good morning, Miss Langdon. Well, now that that's attended to, how do you feel, Larry? You look tired. I am. There's a lot of things to do since this Dixie Logan escaped. Any trace of him yet? No, the police must be blind. He won't come here, will he? He'd be insane if he did. I'm sure he won't. I uh, know he threatened you. You're not afraid, are you? Of course not. All criminals threaten their prosecutors. Never means a thing. I'll take a letter with him. Yeah, on second thought, never mind. I've got to see Mr. Forsythe. He's leaving this morning. I know. How long will he be gone? He says until he's entirely well. Two months, maybe three or more. This is your big chance, Larry. I know. Well, I'll buzz you later, man. All right. that letter. I lost my nerve a little while ago. Impossible. Not in this case. The private secretary eventually knows all of her employer's secrets anyway. So why not this one? I need your help. What kind of help, Larry? I'll have to write this letter by hand later, but I want to see it first. I know how it sounds. And I want you to tell me what you think of it. Of course. Well, here goes. My dearest, I trust this will not come as too great a surprise to you. I'm sure you've known of my deep feeling for you from the moment we met. I know now that I could never get along or be happy with anyone else. Sometimes of late, I've even dared to hope. I'm sure we would make a wonderful team throughout our lives. Very humbly, very hopefully, and with all the love in my heart, I'm asking you to marry me. Ah, well, there it is, Marion. How's it sound? It's, it's very beautiful, Larry. She... Thank you. I hope you'd like it. Please address that to Miss Marion Langdon, County Courthouse. Will you marry me? Oh, Larry, I thought you'd never ask me. You will then? Right away? Why do we wait? This is a three-day stay, but you can get a license tomorrow. See, this is Tuesday. We can be married by Friday. Friday will be fine. That'll give me plenty of time. Nail. Doggone it, good to see you. Been over a year. Known her since she was a chick. I told you, he had always been a very close friend of the family. Close? I'm practically a relative. Now, young lady, what do you want to? Joe, this is Lawrence Dale. Not the next district attorney. We think so. He's also my fiance. We want to be married by you. I told him it would have to be you. Better not be anybody else. Well, what are we waiting for? You got the license, young fellow? Oh, yes. Here we are, sir. You're getting the finest girl in the world, Mr. Dale. I know that, you are. We'll need a witness. Uh, Clem! Yes? Clem, you be the witness. Right. This is Clem Sparks, my deputy. How do you do? 
Are you young people just please join hands? That's right. Now, by the power invested in me, you ought to be coming out of there now. Weddings are a lot easier to get into than out of. Uh, Dale's getting out of this one quick. Thanks very much. Thank you. Fine. Fine. I don't have to wish you luck, Mr. Dale. You've already got it. Yes, I know. Thank you again, Judge. Goodbye, Joel. Come and see us. I sure will, Marion. I sure will. You first, my dear. That is always first. I'll hold you to that. You hit, Marion? You all right? Yes, I'm okay, but it was close. I wonder who could have done it. Somebody gunning for me, of course. You mean you have enemies like that? Every man in my kind of position has enemies. Hey, anyone you could pin this on? I think so. I believe it was Dixie Logan. Well, he'll be kind of hard to run down. I'll get him. Oh, we'll keep this quiet, will you, Judge? I don't want any newspaper to blizzard on. I reckon so. There's not much we can do anyway. Did you get a good look at that car, Clem? No, they got away too fast. Well, folks that heard it will think it was backfire anyway. We'll keep Mum about it. Thank you, Judge. Thanks again, Joel, and don't worry about it. Lots of luck to you, Thank you. Good night. It was Dixie Logan. I'm sure of that. I'll get him. I don't think it was Dixie Logan, and I don't think they were trying to get you. What do you mean? Well, I'm not very hard to distinguish from you, and there was plenty of light coming through that door. Only one shot was fired at me. If they had wanted you, they would have waited until you came out and fired again, as often as necessary. No. Why should anyone gun for you? I don't know, do you? No, but I will. I promise you that. For someone who knew exactly where we were, why, and when. Does that help any? It will. Well, home at last. Safe. Try to forget about it, dear. Let's not have any shadows now. After all, tonight is our wedding night. Yes, so it is. Ooh, we can make it a honeymoon anyway, right here. No, Larry, we can't. Why not? I don't intend a honeymoon with you, now or any time. I know exactly why you married me, and it wasn't love. What do you think was the reason I married you? That lovely old law. A wife can't testify against her husband. Why should I do that? Something convinced you that I knew too much, and I do. You were afraid of what I might do about it. Are you trying to tell me that you did this deliberately? Very. If I could find the well-covered tracks of your crookedness, what makes you think I couldn't see through your marriage offer? You must have had a better reason than that. If you have any evidence... I have, and you're sure of it. Well, why didn't you use it then to break me, instead of putting yourself in a spot where you can't say a word? Maybe I want you to be the next district attorney. What do you know? For well, one thing, I know you're set up with Miller, Carter, and Blake, and how you keep the law away from them and smash anyone who tries to muscle in. You didn't learn all that through your dictaphone. What dictaphone? Don't be coy with me. The one running from my bookcase into your office closet. My closet? Yes, I discovered it and traced it. I found the receiver in the pocket of your top coat hanging in that closet. You what? I found it in your top coat pocket. I don't know what you're talking about. I put nothing in my pocket. Well, who else would? Someone else on your trail, maybe. I haven't touched that coat in weeks. Must have been old Charlie the janitor. Dixie Logan's man. He was in that office. And he's dead. Maybe you're saved again. Who else knows what you know? Nobody yet. How much do you know about that attempt to kill me tonight? Absolutely nothing. It would be very unfortunate for you if I should suddenly die or disappear. I've made arrangements. I tell you, I had nothing to do with it. But you know who did. Well, I can guess. So can I. I don't like so many people around ready to shoot me. That's why I married you. What? We're going to get rid of them. Who? Your pals. And give you a record that'll make you district attorney while we're at it. Who's we? You and I. You're as crooked road, but you're the best prosecutor around. So, while John Forsythe is away, you're going to wipe out Miller and the others and break their grip on this town. Just like that, huh? You're very stupid, Larry. They think they control you and can smash you at will. Get smart. Smash them first. Why did you pick me for the job if I'm so crooked? Because being crooked, you know them better than anyone else. As of tonight, you're going straight. I'm staying on at the office just to make sure that you do. You must be out of your mind. 
No, I'm making sense, and you know it. Anyway, that's the way it's going to be. What makes you think I'll go for this crazy cleanup scheme? You can't help yourself. You can't force me to do anything, remember? Let's say persuade, then. Uh-uh. Not under that lovely old law. You can't testify against me. Yes, I know. And, um... Oh, I forgot to tell you. Some of my best evidence doesn't need me as a witness. It's in a very safe place. This will do as my room. I'm tired. Your room? If you think I'm going to let you get away with this nonsense... You'll have to earn that right. Burglaries, 38 car thefts, 26 holdups, 14 assaults for the worst single day of crime in the city's history. Has law enforcement collapsed because John Forsythe is unable to be here to hold the reins? Is it possible that his young assistant, whose record promised so much, is after all unequal to his task? The police alone cannot halt this crime orgy. The office of district attorney has more potent weapons. Is Lawrence Dale going to use them? This wave of crime and terror must stop. This unbridled lawlessness is menacing our institutions, our homes, our children, our very lives. Ladies, as responsible citizens of this community, I call upon you to help me bring every ounce of pressure we can to bear upon the district attorney's office that this disgrace may be wiped out. doesn't cure anything. I told you they'd cross you and break loose. Told me, told me, told Hi, me. Hi, lovebirds. Congratulations and stuff. Say, for the love of my can a guy take a vacation without everything blowing up? Weddings, crime waves? And what are you doing here in your work clothes? Working. Why? I'm staying on to help Larry until after election. Well, you certainly need to. Anything on tap to cure the discontent? Yes, I'm issuing a statement today. But this office is launching a sweeping investigation into organized crime here. And we won't stop until we wipe out every gang in the city. Good boy. Tell me more. I'm serious about this, Mitch. I'm not pulling any punches. And I'll tell you more later. Did you give Larry that hypo? He runs this office. That's loyalty. Too bad we can't have any more of those lunches. Who says we can't? You mean that? Wait till I get my hat. That's the best offer I've had today. to have this lunch with you today. So did I. But it'll have to be the last one. Why? I can't take it. I only hope that you're happy and will get everything that you want. Nobody ever does. Hello? Dale speaking. Collins and Foreman. Well, I thought... Why are you calling me? Where are you staying? Oh, just a second. Yes, now what was that? 237 Oak Street, apartment 2C. All right, don't budge from there. I'll meet you right in front of your place at 11.30 tonight. The two perjured witnesses. How much did you hear? Hear? All of it. A bad hangover, Larry. Well, they can't touch me. You hope, but you know better. It might be a good idea to send them to Mexico until after the election. Then, after you're in and the three payoff boys are wiped out, you won't have to worry about what Collins and Foreman say. Hello, Miller. You've got a job on your hand.
open up. Must be the DA, but he said he'd meet us downstairs. Dixie, look. Shut up. What do you want? What are you going to do? Let you live if you're smart. I don't want a murder rap. Just want to get rid of the one I got. Sit down over there. All right, all right, let's go. Who hired you to lie against me? Well, who's gonna talk you or this? It was Miller. Who put up the dough? Miller and Carter and Blake. What did Dale have to do with it? Well, nothing. I, we don't know. Miller made us go to Dale, tell him we had evidence on you. Who cooked up the evidence? Miller and the other two. Wasn't Dale? No, he just posted. You're lying. No, he ain't. Honest. How much did you get? They pitched in a thousand bucks apiece. They promised to send us a thousand bucks more, but they didn't. That's why we came back. You suckers. You think they'll pay it? Well, they better pay or we'll talk. Think they'll let you loose to talk? Your boy's broke? Yeah. Write down what you just told me. That everything you testified to was a lie? Who hired you? How much they paid you? And sign it. Yeah, but where are you get this? busy? It's no healthier for me around here than for you. Work fast, and I'll see if you get enough dough to get out of town. You better move fast, you won't get out alive. That Miller's no chump. What's up? Collins and Foreman are back in town. No kidding. I try to get in touch with you? No, not yet. They telephoned me. Said they hadn't seen me. I figured they'd be around. Why? Hungry, I guess. Didn't you send them the rest of that money? No. Why not? I wanted them to come back. You fool. They're dangerous. I'm glad you finally figured that out. You were the fool when you wouldn't let us finish the job after the trial. Stink things up? No, you thought you were in the clear because of the way we handled it. Well, you're not. They sing, and so do we. Where are you then? Uh, we haven't got time to waste talking about that now. Where are they? Oak Street, uh, 237 Oak, apartment 2C. You're gonna meet me out in front at 11.30 sharp. That's all I wanna know. And don't let your boys mess this up. Uh, did they ever? will get you a new trial and acquittal. I'm not going to use them until I get something on Dale. Stinking payoff graft of the railroad and 
Forget it and give me those confessions. Wanna try taking them? Look, use your head on you. They're forgeries and the guys are dead. They'll believe me and I'll testify they're bona fide. Why are you doing this? I'm a newspaper man building up a big explosive story. If I cross you, well, I'm easy to find. And hurry, they'll be here in a minute. You don't want that? No, it wouldn't look good for you. I'm taking you uptown. Maybe you got something. Let's go. Killings. And I told you it was Dixie Logan's man. Logan, Logan. How could they find out where Collins and Foreman were? Find them and ask them. No, Larry. It was cold-blooded murder and you arranged it. Hello, Marion. Hello, Mitch. Hi, Mitch. Hi, Larry. Another mess, huh? No, oh, not so much. Open and shut case. It was Dixie Logan or his men. No, it wasn't. What makes you think not? I don't think. I know. Oh, the time Collins and Foreman were being knocked off by a couple of Miller's trigger men would be my guess. I was having a little chat with Dixie Logan. What? Well, how could you? Well, it was easy. First he'd say something, then I'd say something. Well, where did you see him? Why didn't you report this? I'm reporting now. Why didn't you turn him in? His gun was in the way. Where was this, Mitch? Said a lot of nasty things about you. That doesn't make any difference. Where'd you see him? Said a lot of other things, too. He's mighty sorry about Collins and Foreman. I can imagine. He was very anxious for them to stay alive. That's interesting. Why? Because he thought if they were dead, their confessions were no good. Confessions? Yeah. That they'd lied on the witness stand. And I suppose Logan claimed that the phony confessions accused me. No, they didn't. How'd you know that? They looked very legitimate. Whom did they accuse? Carter, Miller, and Blake. It's gonna make a great story, Mitch. Sure will. Wouldn't it, you? No, I, uh, wanted to get your angle. Well, if what you say is true, why doesn't Logan turn himself in and use these confessions to clear himself? Now, he's a strange guy. You'll have to ask him. He said he'd use them when he was ready. Mitch, will you hold up this yarn in the interest of the public welfare? Depends on how convincing you make it. You've given me my first direct lead. I'll prove who heads this crime organization and who's trying to run the city. But I want the chance to run your lead without tipping anyone off. If you print this story now, it may ruin everything. But if you play ball with me and wait, I promise you I'll break that organization. Well, for a bigger exclusive, I'll postpone this one. Might be in the public welfare. So I'll be a good citizen. Or a blind. You won't regret it, Mitch. How stupid do you think I am? Want me to answer that question? Mitch sets you in here. Mitch is the reason for your locked doors, your partners, and this whole thing. But your moves aren't very bright. That last one, having him come in here with that phony story. Trying to scare me, huh? 
with what? The truth? Imagine his thinking you and I were working together. From that day on, things began to move. Larry knew he was cornered. His only way was the double-double cross. Like crook against crook. Make them get each other out of the way. He sold Miller the idea of double-crossing Carter and Blake. Are you willing to gamble for big stakes? Yeah. Doing what? You and I working alone. If we work together, we can take this entire town over before anybody knows it. How would you like to work along with me? What's on your mind? I figure on double-crossing Carter and Miller, taking over this town for ourselves. Sounds interesting. How would you like to take over this town alone with me? Well, we'll double-cross Miller and Blake and leave the town wide open for us. No, I don't know. Double-crossing's pretty risky business. It's foolproof. When he was all set, Larry put on a big show. It was all so rotten and crooked. But it still looked good. But they were most afraid of what you knew. They were sure they could handle Dixie Logan in those confessions if they caught him. But you were known to be honest, so you had to go. Larry gave the job to Miller with orders to go slow until he could make it look like an accident because plain murder of a newspaper man would be poison. to run that Dixie Logan story tomorrow. With the evidence we've got, I'll indict Miller and send him up for life. We'll run it tomorrow in the first edition. Look, why don't you come up to my place tonight and we'll talk it over. Oh, I'm sorry, Larry. I have to go to a press club dinner tonight. I'll be seeing you. unless we can stop him. No, he wouldn't listen to me. So you stop him. Now, he's going to a press club dinner. Now, it's possible that you might get him before he gets there. That's right. under myself.
guess thanks to you, but... Nick, stay away from that. We got a lamp. Say, what is this, anyway? I thought you guys were laying for me. Laying for you? We've been saving your life for a long time. Who are you? None of your business. Who put you on this job? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Who's on my trail? Someone that won't be any longer. Well, thanks a lot, fellas. I suppose I'll be seeing you around for a while. Yeah, if you look fast enough. Say, would you do me a favor and pass the word on to the boss that I appreciate all this? Forget it. See you. Yeah, Harry and Slim, they're both dead. What? Well, how did it happen? Who did it? That's what I'm calling you to find out. I don't understand. I think you do. It was well planned, Dale. What are you driving at? You weren't giving me a bum steer, were you? You know better than that. I'm not sure. But I know a lot of things you don't even suspect I know. I'll be seeing you, Dale. Hi. Where's Larry? Making plans for tomorrow? Yes. Well, Larry goes in as district attorney tomorrow. It's going to be a big day. I guess so. What? I mean, uh, yes, of course it is. No thrill? Should I have one? Hey, what's the matter, honey? I thought you'd be full of the spirit today. What's well, wrong, Marion? It's just that I thought I could do something which I couldn't. Is it Larry? No. I'm glad you came in today, Mitch. So am I, but you'd rather I left now? Maybe it would be best. Please forgive me. For what? See you in the big office tomorrow. Where are you going? I'm leaving. Leaving? I'll make it short, Larry. My job's finished. Well, what does that mean? What you've been asking for. You're not going to become district attorney tomorrow. Oh, no? Why not? Today, I mailed every bit of evidence I have against you to John Forsythe. So you crossed me, huh? No. You crossed yourself as well as everybody else, including me. I warned you, if you didn't play it on the level, I'd turn you in. I've done everything you demanded of me. Have you? Deals. Deals with every crook you knew. Lying, killing, cheating. You had Collins and Foreman killed, and you tried to have Mitch killed. Mitch, who did everything he could for you because he believed you were on the level. But I'm stopping you. As my wife, you uh, won't mind sharing the disgrace you're bringing on us. You brought it on yourself. And no, I won't be sharing it. There are ways of stopping a male and you. I'm not very soft, Larry. You think you're going to... Hold it, Larry. Better make up the lover's quarrel while you have time. What do you want? You, Larry. I want to talk to you. You won't need that gun. I will, in just a minute. For what? Anybody who crosses me is always sorry as long as he lives. But I haven't crossed. But how hard you tried. You really had me fooled for a while. Now listen, Bill. All the time trying to wipe us out. Playing one of us against the other. Well, you're crazy. Am I? Maybe I was, but not anymore. It won't do you any good to kill us, Miller. But it'll make me feel awfully good. Especially you. You're the cause of this whole blow-up. I don't know what your game was or what you expected to gain by it, but it didn't pay off. Oh, yes, it did. Dixie Logan. Yes, Mr. Dale. Or how could it? Marion and I. You aren't married now. You never were. What do you mean? Marion was on a spot when you asked her to marry you. But she saw a chance to help me, so we arranged a phony marriage. After all, she didn't want to be a bigamist. The sanctimonious, supermoral Marion Langdon. The cheap gun model. No, Larry, I never was. I loved Dixie. I was married to him for three years before you framed him. I never knew he was mixed up in any crimes. But I did know that he couldn't have committed the job you sent him up for. That's why I came in, determined to find proof to free him and break you. Which was swell for my setup. Now I have a very fine idea. You're gonna be district attorney and keep everybody out of my way. I'm taking this town over. Take it or leave it. That'd be very 
glad to play ball with you, but uh, I'm afraid you're a little bit late. Yeah? Why? Marion mailed John Forsyth all the evidence she had against me. Looks like I'm not going to be just a attorney. I may even take over that cell that you have the state penitentiary. Little fool. Why'd you send any evidence before you told me? I did it because it cleared you, but now I'm sorry. Even if you were framed, I know now that you're right. Answer. Hello? Oh, yes, Chief. Listen fast. We just got a line on Dixie Logan. Heading your way and gunning for you. The squad car is on its way up. Should be there in a few minutes. Play it safe. Get your wife and yourself out of the house if you can without being seen. Leave the door open. Okay, thanks, Chief. Somebody tip the police. They're coming up here to get you. Talk fast. If I stop the mail, of course, I are you in this DA? You ready to talk business? Certainly. But she's gonna cause us trouble. Wife or no wife, she won't be around. <laughs> That's all there is, Mitch. You know the rest better than I do. Mitch? What a story. You wouldn't believe it, John. Yes, I would. She sent this to me. It is to be your exclusive. Confirms everything she said. What a scoop. that I can never print it. I thought you'd say that. I'll just burn these. All right, John. Goodbye, Marion. Don't worry, honey. Everything's gonna be all right. 